Hey, what's up, guys? This is Sam OG. So this is um, uh, another another review uh, for a game called Feed. Uh, this is a game I should have reviewed a long time ago, but uh, I just got around and uh, finished reading it a couple days ago. This is, uh, from what I've seen so far, the best vampire game you can find uh, out there for, as an RPG. The reason why I say that is because it is because it's the way the the, the goal of the, of his design, um, you know. But but let, let's talk about it. But first, first, let's look at the book. So it's a gorgeous book. I like the artwork. Really like the artwork. It's a game by Chris Newton, and uh, it's a full color book. So you have inside. It might gonna be hard for me, but I'm gonna try to find one. Great, great artwork in the book. All kind of uh, of artwork. So it's uh, it doesn't have any setting. It's the only the only thing that it has in common is that it's built for vampire stories. So how does it go? Uh, first, the intention of Chris Newton's intention. When he created that game, it's written at the beginning of the book. He, he, he tells his story, and uh, there is a um, the, the, the whole idea was to represent addiction. Uh, the game is based around what it is to fight that urge of being addict to something. Now, of course, there is an analogy with vampire that is being doing here. So the idea is that hunger. You have that you have that hunger in yourself, and your character is gonna have to fight who he is to, toward that addiction. And the it is a really really clever game. I got I mean it's one of the most interesting game I've read, you know, in, in a long time. Just because first it is super simple. Uh, I read that book, you know, in one day. Uh, really easy to read, really easy to understand as well, and the, the the core mechanic and idea inside the game is, I mean, it's it's built to represent that struggle, that inner struggle that m most you know most individuals live when they have addiction. In that case. It is romanticized by being uh, transposed to vampire. Uh, so now you can cr you can create any vampire story. You can be in dark ages. You can play a, a vampire uh, blade uh, blade style game. You can play a vampire the masquerade if you want with it. You can play um, you know like a fucking a luchadores uh, mexicano uh, vampire like. Uh, uh, from dust till down, kind of thing. <laughs> Luchadores. You know. I'm just joking, but you know, you can play, you can play any any kind of uh, of genre of vampire with the game. That's the whole thing. So it's a generic vampire game. Now, how it goes? Uh, it's quite simple. You have all kinds of the the the, the whole concept start with the idea. I'm gonna show you the character sheet, and you'll you'll understand right away. All right. So this is the character sheet. The lighting is really, really bad. Um, all right, so these boxes are filled with answers from a questionnaire. So you have question one, question two, question three. So the cues, 11, 12. So you answer a 15 question questionnaire and you fill these boxes with a small sentence or expression. These are gonna represent your threats. So you have personal threats, spiritual threats, physical uh, threats, and public uh, threats. These are reputations and money and stuff like that. These are physical. These are personal, like charisma and uh, psychological stuff like that. And spiritual is your beliefs and the way you see things and stuff like that. And so the idea is that you have um, the size of the dice, so from D3 to D12, 
and you have the number of the dice for your pool, which can vary from one, two, three, stuff like that. So the idea is that you answer the question, then you distribute these uh, die size and die number to the threads. So for example, let's say you have uh, like a uh, strong back. I have a strong back, like I, <laughs> I'm a strong person. And you want that to be really powerful. So you give it, you give it a D12, but it's not important for the character. So, so you only give him one D12. But if he has, let's say for example, bad vision, and uh, it is really important uh, for, for the character. It's going to be a D3 because it's important that it's bad. D3 is weak and you're going to give him like three dices kind of thing. So the more dices you give, the more it's important, the less dices, uh, the less than the die number is the die size is uh, the less powerful it's going to be. So it goes both ways like that. Now, these threads are your human threads. So what, what makes you a character? So these sentences and these small expressions you write in these boxes tells you who you are as a character by answering the question. Now, I'm going fast on this, but the idea is that these threads are gonna lose, are gonna take damage. There are damage box here for your treads. So the treads, I'm sorry for the, for the, I'm gonna take it away. Uh, the light is really, really bad, I'm sorry. So, so the idea is that the, um, these treads are gonna take damage when you're gonna roll them and you're gonna fail against something. And at a certain point, uh, they're gonna they're gonna start to become weaker, and eventually, uh, depending on uh, because the game is divided in different kind of phases, like the temptation phase, uh, and uh, and a couple other phases I, I have uh, I don't remember right now. But the idea is that uh, you're gonna have situation in play where you're gonna be confronted to the hunger. So there is a hunger scale. Uh, at the end, at the bottom of the sheet, and you uh, will you will move slowly to the right, and you're gonna get more hungry and hungry for blood. And eventually, some of your human threats are gonna become vampiric threats, and you can end up on your sheet with like um, uh, four, four human threads and like 11 vampire, vampiric threads. And this is how, and you can overcome those threads. So you, you become more vampiric or you can become more human and then you have this whole inner struggle of, uh, you know, uh, losing your humanity or getting it back. And it all comes down to you know how you manage your dice pools and how you 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 roll in game. So you know you can be on a bad bad strike uh, of rolls and you you're becoming a vampire more and more. And the idea is that these threats uh, are like stuff like relation to my parents, relation to my girlfriend, relation to my coworkers or whatever. And and so so therefore you you are still a human. Sometimes you go to work, you do your thing. But, but the, the threats on your sheet is a vampiric threat. So sometimes you're gonna be, you're gonna have to roll that threat in a situation where you are with your friends, for example. So you create that weird, weird and awkward situation where you look at them with a vampiric, you know, face and, and they don't know you're a vampire and, and you know. So it's, uh, that, there's that, that struggle in yourself where you, you, you you are going from uh, from one situation to another, so uh, and it all comes down to that addiction thing. So basically, how the game goes: you sit together as a group or not. There is a GM in this game. Uh, you know, it's uh, there's a GM in the game, 
And uh, the idea is that you, uh, I don't know how I can, I don't know how I can make it less lighty. I'm sorry. So uh, yeah, so the um, so there's a GM in the game, and uh, the GM can uh, can create the whole thing, but you can create it as a group. So it suggests that you get together as a group at the beginning. Uh, you choose the strain, the vampire strain you're gonna use. So you by defining what vampire, what is a vampire in your game, it's gonna give you a couple different kind of powers or different kind of um, of stats and stuff. And then, and then you, uh, by defining that strain, then you get together and say, okay, what kind of story we're gonna tell? And then you do a, what we call, what we call the, in the game a character pitch, where you say, okay, I, I wanna, I wanna play that character in that setting, and and then you create the character by answering the questions. Uh, the character uh, creation in the game is really nice, really smooth. You answer the question, you fill up the sheet, distribute the number, si uh, die, die size, and die and number of dice. And then and then you're good to go. So it's really really simple. And when you play, there's a two or three different kind of resolution of rolls, and uh, it's the idea that you roll your dice pool, and you take away the the failure from the uh, the opponent dice pool. So either the GM who played the adversity or the player who played his own threats, and you bring them into your pool. And the one that has most dices at the end is the one who wins. And uh, and then there is a gamble situation that comes into play where you can say, no, 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 I hold on. I take the damage to my threat, but I hold on to my dices. So that way you can win, even if you are losing uh, with failures, because you decided to take damage instead. So there's this whole, this whole gimmick dice gimmick of like okay I, I take the damage but but i win and and then there's a gamble because the other player can have a veto on that as well and then so it creates that that uh that nice back and forth uh situation every time you roll the dice so yes and that and that's it basically so so the reason why this game i think it's it's really interesting and it deserve uh deserves a try is because it it's really meant to create one thing and one thing only, it's that, and it's, it's this is why it's called feed. It's that you're gonna be hungry for blood, and you're gonna have this addiction that's gonna strike you always in the game, and this is gonna create that inner struggle between your human self and your vampiric self, and that takes form of the threats that you have on your sheet and that you roll all the time in the game. So for me, that is uh, amazing and I strongly recommend Feed. Now, the, the, like I said, the book is nice to read, but sometimes it's hard to find a rule in it. It's not really visual. It's more like a, it's written in a in more of an essay uh, feel to it kind of thing. So sometimes it's hard to find the rules in it and there's not a lot of them. So sometimes you need to dig and read between the line kind of thing to understand what it's supposed to do. It's not that hard because it's simple, but it's just sometimes it can be a little bit annoying. So it's not like a user friendly, uh, you know, like book where you have charts and stuff like that. It's most like, okay, go and read the paragraph and then you'll find out kind of thing. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. Chris Newton's feed, um, strongly recommended. Uh, have a look. Uh, good vampire again. Alright, talk to you soon.